We have just released the Golden Gate software for Origin and that will download to your tool if you're connected to Wi-Fi in the background and be available for updating immediately. Beyond the basic performance and stability improvements, we've added extensions. Extensions enable us to target specific workflows that would usually require a computer and enable you to do them right on tool in the field. So in this release, we've bought two extensions. The moment you log into your account, they'll be activated. They're free with the release and they are box joint basic and text basic. So we'll go through those now. So once Golden Gate has installed, you'll notice down here, I am logged into my profile, which means I've automatically had my extensions activated. So you see that in the update screen, they are both checked green. If that's not the case, just make sure you're connected to Wi-Fi and then make sure you're logged in with your profile. That's all that's required to make sure the extensions are activated. You are now good to go with Golden Gate. Extensions, text basic. So you'll see here our left-hand menu in the design mode has changed and we've updated some icons and just packaged all of our create elements under one area. This gives us room to grow. The, set, the other buttons remain unchanged. We've added the two extensions, so we've enabled them. Now we'll run you through Text Basic. Think of Text Basic as a letter punch set. So you can create capital letters live on tool at any size you like, all as single line files, so you can cut them efficiently. The idea is to quickly annotate maybe a fixture or something like that, rather than getting the Sharpie out or whatever, you can just engrave it with Origin. Or if someone has a you know customization they want, a quick sign, a gift to someone, that's really quick to do. We'll kick off here with Shaper Made, and it usually defaults to center anchor point, but this stuff persists. So if I change it to bottom left, it will remain in this state the next time I go to place. Same applies to the height. At point 0.3, we're able to cut most of these shapes. Place it now, and then go to cut mode. You'll see here, if I go into auto mode with a double click, it's able to cut this whole shape as a single operation. So all the letters have been tuned to be as efficient as possible for a single line cutting. And then retract when you're done. You can obviously make these larger, uh, up to any size you like really, and uh, you might want to use something like a ball nose cutter or something like that. And as you make them larger, you uh, change your cutter diameter and you'll get a good idea of what that looks like. You'll see here that's blowing away a lot of material and is illegible, but we can make this any size we like by going back to design, text basic, we'll accept that info and then make it eight inches. So you see how large that is there now. You'll also notice we can zoom in so we got the basic pinch to zoom happening there. So that's gradually making its way into all elements of origin. I'll just cancel out of that. We won't demo that. We'll move on to the next topic. Under the create menu, you'll see we've activated our extensions, text and box joint basic. With box joint basic, we can see here, the first time you open it, you will get the guide. So this is a, just a quick visual understanding of the layout of our box. So we calling the front face A, and then we show how that's going to be fixtured in our vertical workstation. We show the shape that we're going to cut. So this is the tool path, this blue element, and that's designed to remove these dotted areas. So that's what creates our pins or the cavities between our pins. And then zero zero is called out here because we grid our stock and the grid zero zero point is where we place our box joint shape. So we can see our A sides, B sides, how we fixture it, what's removed, and the toolpath. You can easily get to that and hide it just by hitting that button there. Now we'll go through the rest of the buttons. Firstly, because we've gridded on the edge of this stock, we need to align our anchor point here to zero, zero, which is at this leading edge of the stock. So I can zoom out here to get you a better idea of what that means. This is already set up correctly for a five pin box. So now we're at zero, zero, we're aligned, and now we're going to go through these parameters. So first up, bit diameter. So this is just highlighting in this diagram that the cutter can fit through that gap. So by describing the bit diameter, we can then adjust these parameters, preventing you from making pinholes, gaps between your pins that it's too small for the cutter to pass through. So quarter inch is the cutter we have installed, so that works. Next, we define the thickness of our stock. That is described there in the diagram. That's the wall thickness of your box. Next, we go to width. These can all be changed, obviously. So this is the will be like the height of the box. That dimension's clearly defined there. So measure that with calipers. You want to be quite accurate. And then the total number of pins. So you see here we count every pin. We're talking if this top one is a four pin box joint. You can see there's two on each sides, and we're bringing your attention to the fact that even an odd pin counts make a difference to the format of your box joints. 
With a odd count, you'll get positive pins on the outside edges of your A panels. So the A is the blue panel. And if you have an even number, you will get an offset pin alignment. So there's a positive one at the outside edge of each panel. So that's just a stylistic choice. Uh, the odd count is the norm. So we're going to go with five here. And then the last setting is glue gap. So all of these in combination mean that you don't really have to think about any of the math going on under the hood. You can just quickly enter the dimensions of your element, cutter dimension and pin count, and then you just leave the glue gap at the default, which is 0.005. That's the gap between the pins that you will want to test on your material to determine exactly the amount of friction you want or the space that you want the glue to inhabit. If it gets too tight, it'll be very difficult to push your box joints together. And there's the added downside of you can end up wiping all the glue off and it not having the ability to bind or chemically attach your two panels together if there's no glue left um, after the friction pushes them away. So experiment with that setting on off cuts and then you'll just be able to leave that. So long as you're using the same cutter and in the same material the same glue gap should be appropriate so with all those parameters laid out we are good to go and we can just place that and start cutting So once you've completed cutting your A panels, the two of them, you're going to swap to your B panels. Now, with most origin operations, that may entail importing a new file or something like that, doing a new scan even. With box joint, we've introduced the ability to swap. So you'll see here, now we swap to the B panel. The icon sort of describes the, the format that that will be. And that enables you to just index in your next piece of stock and continue cutting. It saves a lot of, you know, remembering your settings, all that sort of stuff. You can just flip and flip back at any stage as well. You're not tied into a particular workflow. You can cut these in whatever order you like. So all the other parameters remain intact. They all stay the same. You just can flip the joint afterwards. That concludes the notable features included in the Golden Gate release. I hope you enjoy those uh, and be sure to tag us in your uh, Instagram feeds.